Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Tyrants of the Underdark by Hasbro, Wizards of the Coast, and Gale Force 9. This is the second printing or the reprinting of a classic game that has apparently been around for a long time, but is the first time that I have played it. It plays two to four players, it takes roughly about an hour to an hour and a half to play, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Tyrants of the Underdark, you are attempting to deck build and control an area on the board here. Each player is going to select a player board, gather their troops and spies, a specific set of 10 cards to begin with, and then go to town, placing a piece on one of the spaces on the board here and moving around, trying to gather control tokens, trying to defeat neutral and, of course, uh, their real opponent's pieces. And uh, at the end of the game, when either the deck here runs out or when they when somebody runs out of tokens, the game will trigger an ending and the player who's got the most card value in their deck, the most area control points and of course markers on the board will be the winner of the Underdark. This game here is a classic with a nice twist of deck building and of course board control slash manipulation. An overall interesting game which I'll explain how to set up right now then of course the gameplay and followed up by my review. To begin Tyrants of the Underdark, there are two things you'll need to start doing. The first thing is decide how many players are playing. Based on that, we'll determine what space of the board you will be utilizing. If it's just two players, you're going to use the middle portion. If it's three, you'll choose an extra side, and if it's all four, you'll take the whole board on. Each player is also going to be getting a specific race or class of characters they'll be utilizing, and ten cards. Three of them are going to be soldier tokens, and then the rest are going to be nobles. These are what you're going to use in order to purchase cards from the store, as well as, of course, utilize the um, combat uh, resources in order to place troops down, move troops along, battle other troops, return spies from the enemies, and control the area of the Underdark. Place all of your tokens in your barracks, and of course, you're going to be placing out one of your pieces in one of the five starting areas, which are, of course, the black spaces on the board, and based on the number of players, is the ones that are going to be available for you to choose from. You're going to choose two decks, and there's about five or six decks to choose from. Uh, from them, they're going to be like dragons and snakes and serpents and all kinds of different things. You'll shuffle them together, and then you'll place them on the storefront. You'll deal out six cards from there and place them into the areas in which you can purchase them. And there are three specific types of cards that you can utilize in the game. House Guards and Priestess of Lolith, which are basically cards that will double your currency. And then finally, if you're using a very specific faction, you'll put in the Insane Outcasts. Take all the Victory Point tokens, they're set aside in 1s and 5, and place them in the Victory Point token space. Devoured Cards area is separate and will be utilized later in the game. Then everybody's going to shuffle up their 10 cards that they're going to be getting in the game. After that, each player will draw 5 cards, you'll choose a player to go first, and then you're going to begin the game. Pretty simple, right? On the first player's turn, they're going to be drawing those five cards to start with. These, like most deck builder games, are going to give you currency. There are two types of currency. One will allow you buying power for the store here, where you can purchase them based on the top right-hand corner. That's their cost. And the other, cu other currency is going to be the combat currency. This will allow you to play deploy new units. It will allow you to defeat opponents' units in the same area that you occupy. And finally, you can return enemy spies in an occupied area as well. Now, the main thing about this game is called Presence, and Presence is really important to note. When you have Presence is when you're located in a space, you'll have Presence in that space, as well as an adjacent space there, and if you're in a space that is next to another space that's like a white area or one of these main territory control areas, you'll have Presence in each adjacent space next to that territory. You can only perform actions that say you have to have presence in that area, provided that you do have presence in that area. So, for instance, if your characters are not on one side of the board and you wish to take an action on that side of the board, you have to have a card that doesn't require you to have presence. Otherwise, you must be in that area or adjacent to the space you wish to utilize with the cards in hand. But to begin the game, you're only going to be getting diff two different types of currency, and you'll be spending them, basically playing them, and eventually discarding them to gain cards 
cards here on the, the buying shop or the area. Uh, of course, maybe let's say I had three currency, I could then take this Drown Negotiator and I could put it into my discard pile. Additionally, maybe let's say I had uh, two power, two of the uh, combat points, I can utilize that to take units and place them in spaces that I have uh, control of or that I have presence. So I could place one right next to Chedna Sod over here. And if I want to, I could place one adjacent to the one I just placed, or I could place it somewhere else, maybe on the bottom end of there. So basically it gives me a little bit more presence in different areas around the game map. I could also spend three of that currency to remove a unit that is, of course, within presence of mine. Whenever you defeat somebody else's unit, you're going to flip that over and put it in your trophy hall, which will give you victory points. There are white tokens that the board is going to start with. And in order to basically open those areas up, you'll need to defeat them. They're basically like a neutral player that anybody can defeat. Um, and of course, once you've utilized all of the cards in your hand, whether it be deploy units to remove spies in an area of your, of your choice, if you have presence, or to defeat an opposing or neutral faction, and then of course buying from the shop, that'll end your turn. Whenever you buy a card, you'll basically take a card from the market and flip it out onto the board here, and the next player will get a chance to go. They're going to go ahead and take five cards. They're going to play those cards, utilize the cards, and uh, go ahead and utilize the board as well, buying cards from here and replacing them. Uh, two unique notes of the game as far as the uh, buying goes. So you're going to have the House Guard and the Priestess of Lolith. These guys here are always available to you based on if there is enough still left in the supply. And you can buy them for three and two respectively. And they function just like the cards down here. You'll be placing them into your discard pile, which will be used on a further turn. How does that work? Well, eventually you're gonna run through your entire deck. You'll go draw the next five, you'll use those, they'll go to your discard pile, and then you're gonna go ahead and take your discard pile when you have no cards left in your draw deck and you need to draw. You'll shuffle it up, and then you're gonna go ahead and draw five cards, just like any other deck builder. And of course, you're hopefully going to be getting some new cards that you previously purchased on subsequent turns, and you'll be able to utilize them. And there's a ton of different things that these cards do. Some of them will interact with your spies, which basically are, allowing you to place units that are um, without presence. So you can place them in an area that you don't have presence in and they give you presence in that area. It also stops players from gathering control in certain areas or total control. And it also lets you place units down on spies location areas. And of course, with their presence, very powerful. Other cards will allow you to defeat white units, which are the neutral units or defeat your opponent's units. Some of them will involve devouring cards. Devouring cards means that you're going to remove them from the game. While while others are going to allow you to basically upgrade or promote the cards in your hand or your deck or your discard pile. When you promote a card, you'll place it on the left-hand side of your board, and that is going to generate you more points or more value at the end of the game. Now, it won't be in your deck or your discard pile or your hand anymore, but at the end of the game, when you tally up points, that will give you a higher value. And the way you look at it is, for instance, you'll take a card, and if it's in your deck, your hand, or your discard pile at the end of the game, it'll score you the right hand on the bottom, on the bottom right-hand side. It'll score you the right hand value, but if you promoted it, it will give you the uh, left hand value. And this is going to be the uh, promotion value. So three or six. And of course, maybe you want to start promoting later in the game. The game is going to trigger an end when somebody runs out of units, in which case the whole um, the round will finish with equal turns or if the shop deck runs out, in which case you're basically gonna finish the round off, you're going to tally up all the points that is in your deck, discard pile, and hand, any victory points that you've acquired from gathering control areas, and of course, uh, any of these little units you've killed, whether it be your opponent's units or whether it be neutral units in your trophy room or trophy hall. Uh, that's basically the idea of the game. Let's talk about a little bit about control, and I think that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, this board here, uh, this board is all about area control. It's kind of like risk, in fact, where you'll be placing down units using the power or using your currency, uh, and you'll be defeating units in subsequent areas that you have presence, and of course, taking them into your trophy hall. The main way to get points in this game, however, is control. If you have more units than any other player in one of these circular areas here, you're going to score uh, victory points at the end of your turn, provided you have the token. Uh, but you, uh, but well, first of all, you're going to score the. You're going to get bonus uh, currency. This is so. Let's say that I had uh, three red units in this area here, and there's only one other white unit. I would take control. Now, if I had all of the units as my color, I would get total control. 
the end of the round, you are going to, at the end of every turn, you're going to, of course, uh, discard your hand, draw five, but you're also going to gain victory points based on each location that you have total control on. And throughout your turn, if you have control, you can utilize the resources on the control markers that you own to buy stuff from the shop. So most of them are going to give you one currency. And of course, total control will give you one currency and then a certain number of victory points you can get every turn. So it's cumulative upkeep, basically, of currency and see that you're going to be getting. You get three with this on one turn. If you still have control the next turn, full control, you'll get three more. So you're basically trying to gather as many victory points as you can by holding total control in certain areas, or at least control, which will give you more currency to allow you to buy better cards in the game. That's the Tyrants of the Underdark board game experience. Let me tell you what I think about it. Tyrants of the Underdark puts two things that I love into a board game, deck building and area control or board manipulation. I really, really like games like Risk that are a little less luck-based and a little more based on skill or strategy. And I also like games like uh, Legendary, where it has a deck building aspect to it. You can buy certain cards, you put them in your discard pile, you'll draw five again, and you'll continue doing it in that way. There's a ton of great deck builders in the world, but there's no game that I have seen that utilizes a deck builder and a board quite like this. Now, you might think of the game Clank. Clank shares some similarities in the fact that you're playing cards to move your unit around, gathering things on a board, and then escaping in a certain time limit. This one here is all about maintaining troops, controlling order, controlling control markers and locations, and scoring as many points as you can until the game inevitably will end. And that was basically going to be because when you lose units, they're going to go into players' trophy halls as opposed to back into your barracks. So uh, eventually, they're not going to have any more units left to play. So there's almost, almost no reason to not keep pushing out units based on the choices that you make as far as what cards you'll be playing with in the market deck. And the market deck is going to have two unique factions that you can mix and match with up to six different types, and they all function differently, and there's a ton of different cards involved in them. Some of the cards are going to be more rare than others, which will tell you on the bottom how many cards are in each of the decks. Some of them are going to be more often you'll be finding, which might be good because maybe you want four or five of them as opposed to the only one available in the deck. Usually the ones that are available are very powerful. They're usually dragon cards, and they usually influ influence, or at least in the dragon like they're big dragons. They usually influence the game in a powerful way for you. The value of cards will roughly go from like two to about seven or eight. Some of them go a little higher and they're very, very useful, very, very powerful. And they all have unique options. So for one of them, it'll give you uh, one choice to purchase two different types of currency. Another will let you put uh, your deck in your discard pile and then promote a card from your discard pile. So that can clear out some cards in your deck. Maybe you can memorize the cards in your deck to a certain extent. You'll know what's left in there. Maybe you don't want those cards so you kind of get rid of them um, and others will give you uh, two abilities abilities this one's gonna give you three currency for purchasing and then you can return another player's troop or spy returning typically goes back to the barracks while as eliminating will go into your trophy hall or trophy case where you're gonna be collecting those units and based on the two different classes you put together are going to allow you with some unique and interesting combinations of play which is excellent uh, this game here is excellent I really really enjoyed the gameplay of this game this is one that's going to stay in my collection forever um, um, hands down, extremely fun. I'm not a huge D&D player. I don't know a whole lot about any of this stuff going as far as lore goes. But what I can tell you is that if you like deck builders and you like area control games, then Tyrants of the Underdark is something you need to try, check out. Uh, this is an, a newer reprint to, um, to an older game, I believe. And uh, they have, I guess, I don't know if they've added to this or not. I just know that it's a new reprint and has the six different choices, which is a ton of different combinations. Uh, everything here is fairly good quality. Uh, I would have preferred that it'd be a nicer insert the box can is kind of like iffy in, inside it's not terrible but there's little cho quality choices i would have made uh there's a character you'll be playing with or you can choose that has a black marker and i would have preferred that to be green something easier to see on the board because the board is so dark and um that's pretty much my only qualms with it in fact i would actually prefer maybe i can do a 3d printer version of these little pieces so i can see them easier on the board and i can just paint them myself it's time to go to thingiverse and find out um because they're just little pieces, little chips. They work just fine, but I would actually like something a little more grandiose. Maybe even like a collector's edition or like ex expansion that gives you those fancy pieces there. Uh, the large control markers are nice, easy to see, which is what I like. Um, and of course, the different varieties of cards. There's so many of them to choose from. Makes this game a very, very enjoyable experience. I also like the fact that it comes with a little shore sheet, which is actually really easy to use and something I do recommend using and of course reprinting if you need to because it just saves a lot of time and hassle as far as having to keep track of all the points that you're trying to add up in the game. 
the game is straightforward, streamlined, easy to play, easy to understand, beautiful artwork, beautiful illustrations. Uh, it's got high quality as far as everything but little pieces and nicks and panties that I talked about. And of course, just the little side thing of the coloration on some of the pieces there. But overall, a wonderful, excellent game that I strongly suggest you take a look at. Deck builder fans are going to dig this game as long as you don't mind the board and area control. It's very aggressive and you're going to have to fight other players. It's very seldom you're not going to be able to have to control areas. This is all about controlling as much space in the underdark that you possibly can. Total control is best and eliminating players from the board is not a bad option as well, but they're always going to come back. You're never going to be fully out of this game or anything like that. You're going to be able to come back and push through again. And of course, you score points not only with what you're doing on the board here, but also the points that you acquire in your deck. So there's multiple variations of ways to win, but always a good combination of everything is a good idea. Anyway, Tyrants of the Underdark, it's my extreme seal of approval. Wonderful game. Excellent. Probably going to hit uh, my game of the year here because it did technically come out this year. So even though it also came out previously, but I haven't played it. So it's getting there. Excellent. Oof, so good. I, I love this game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Tyrants of the Underdark. If you enjoyed this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification button if you want to see more videos just like this one helps promote the channel and of course you get to see new games that you may or may not have seen before the website unfilteredgamer.com has reviews of games that you probably don't see on this youtube channel which will allow you to kind of get the choice to read reviews or of course watch reviews it'll be up to you and of course my videos are on there as well live stream every sunday 6 30 p.m pst where you can watch us play games just like this one i don't know if this one would make a good for for a good live stream just because there's so much going on there's so much space and I have to use a bunch of cameras and I don't know how well it would work on that one. But nevertheless, this is a game for those medium to heavy type deck builder fans. Mm, I just I just like this game a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching. Patreons, thank you even more. Even that dollar every month helps us out tremendously, allows us to keep doing our live streams and whatnot. As always, guys, I look forward to controlling the Underdark without you next time. <laughs>